this place. Why not? It just got here, you know? Let's just give it a chance so we'll have a drink and see who's here. Hey, Get girls. out of me! How's it going, girls? Get out! Well... Fuck... I was actually planning on doing this for Valentine's Day next year, but, uh... Well... Apparently, they're going to release a sequel in September, five months after the first one came out the world really needed that. Um, as a result, I have had a massive spanner thrown in my works and just decided, fuck it, I'll review the sequel when it comes out. So, here's Super Seducer. I figured I'd review this one now and take a look at Super Seducer 2 when it comes out because, well, I want to review something new at some point. For those of you not aware, Super Seducer is a seduction tutorial released as a video game by Richard Laruna, a dating guru who attracts controversy wherever he goes, such as in November of 2017 when he was grilled by Piers Morgan of all people for saying that all British women are overweight and entitled. They're not. I honestly thought overweight and entitled was like a minimum requirement for British citizenship or something. But actually more British men problem. are overweight. Well Richard, we have three English women here. Uh, are they all fat, entitled, stupid? I mean... I, I don't know of, them. What's your view of the women You don't know them, but you... But, well but Richard, you I just, just look, cast your Piers. expert eye over the women at this desk, for example. I think that that, that would be rude. I'd like to no, get no, things... No, no, let's hear you be brutally so, honest. Well, I don't, I don't want I mean, to be baited into you're full, you're full of this. I've you've got, got respect three women. For, I've got respect for the women You've got here. no respect for personal. English women. That's I, the whole point. I'm generalising. You have zero respect for English women. You I've are a repulsive individual who's come on here. And when you're actually confronted, when you're actually British confronted women. by smart, intelligent, beautiful women, you can't deal with them, can you? Of course I can. I'm dealing with well, everyone. To be fair on Richard, his point was that women from Eastern Europe are more attractive and well-mannered. And in truth, I kind of get what he was trying to say. However, due to his problems, he says it in a way that sounds awful to everyone who hears it. This is something that Richard does a lot in this game. I might come across as on the fence on this one, but in truth, I don't really care about any of it. I hate everyone involved from Piers Morgan to Susanna suffers from Asperger's Reed, and the only feeling I get is disappointment that nobody sent a guided missile to this studio whilst the three of them were in the same room together. So why am I talking about a fashion guru on a video game show? Well, it turns out that he's not only released this video game, but also stars in it and acts as the player character. It's not really a video game, as it's more of a series of videos depicting some events, in which the player says what they would do in that situation, and the game tells them if they're doing right or not. Being on the autistic spectrum, I did receive a lot of speech and language therapy growing up, and in all honesty, I didn't like this kind of therapy. I got it late on in life and I just found it kind of condescending and not very helpful in the slightest. It was the therapy that I especially like the least. My reasoning for not liking it is actually one of my biggest criticisms towards the game itself. The fact that the situations are just too staged to emulate real life. In reality, a lot of these setups wouldn't be possible, like Richard getting a quiet corner in a club where there's no one else around and the music doesn't affect their audio at all, and talking among friends who stop and listen to everything he says. When I got to college, I didn't find any of this very helpful, mainly because people just sort of shout things out in reality. You have like a whole circle of people just saying things without any rhyme or reason, and it's really difficult to find any form of entry point for some people. It's not like this or a Bioware game where everyone stops and listens to you speak. People talk through you or don't hear you, 
or feel that what they're saying is more important. It is just human nature and I feel like these things are actually unhelpful because of that. There's a lot of things that would make these situations fall apart, especially if you weren't aware that it could be anything else but a one-on-one -on -one comfortable environment. And it also doesn't tell you what happens if somebody else interjects, like, randomly. So this is going to be a different kind of video, which hopefully is going to be just as fun. Hopefully. Hey mate, Richard LaRuina, your friendly neighbourhood seduction guru here, and welcome to Super Seducer. I'm so excited to be getting it into your hands. Whoa! Richard, we just met. You ain't slipping anything into my hands yet. We had a fantastic time creating it. In coming up with the game. So go ahead, jump in there, and finally, thank you so much for buying it, and I hope you really enjoy it. Yeah, that rings a little hollow knowing about some of the other controversies surrounding this thing, but we'll get to that later. So I want to take a minute to talk about the menu, which sounds like a boring talking point, but I just have to point out how funny the pictures are to me. For a start, every one of them has a model in it. Every one is forced and posed as fuck. Every one of these women is paid to be here, and a lot of the women in this game don't look like they want to be there at all. There's no images of Richard in a natural setting. They don't even try to make the images look remotely realistic. Granted, gorilla filming in a club might be difficult, or might not have gone well, but it would make a better case for Richard's advice, and his claims of being a massive success, than him looking all hand dog at the game when a bunch of models stood around him. I'm not saying that he isn't a success, I'm just saying there's no evidence of it here. Or really anywhere. Like every picture I've ever seen of Richard is so forced. This doesn't say anything about his success as a dating guru, and the only assurance that we have is that Richard claims that what he does works, and there's no evidence that it does. Equally, there's no evidence that it doesn't. But, because he hangs around with models all day who are paid to pretend to be interested in him, it does make you ask a few questions as to why that is the case. I mean, I could do this. Fuck, I have done this. Here's me at prom, the centre of attention of every attractive girl in the room. Some of them were very attractive and went on to be models. Now, I could say that this is how life is for me all of the time, but... In reality, it was a joke picture that me and these girls took, and after that, they went off laughing and never spoke to me again all night. In fact, some of them haven't ever spoken to me again since. Which isn't a complaint, I'm just saying that it doesn't prove anything, and he looks like he's compensating. Again though, I do love his hangdog expression in so many of these pictures. He looks like a schoolboy. He looks more terrified than I did, and I was acting that way as part of the joke. Don't. Well, no, I think being entitled is blaming your lack of relationship success on an entire nation of women. I was very successful in England. I especially like this one shot of Richard looking very... I don't know, he's just very lost and depressed. In truth, he comes across as someone with a waning self-esteem which I can empathise with, to a degree, but I feel like he's doing this in all the wrong ways. He comes across as someone trying to reinvent himself as something that he wants to be, rather than an actually attractive dating guru master. But anyway, fuck that, we've got a game to play. I think. I think you can call this a game. Maybe. The first mission is harassing a random woman on the street. Can we make her interested in your discount Matt Berry ass? So it turns out playing this music that makes it look like some sort of perfume advert or porno with some uh, choice zooms doesn't really make your game look very classy. In fact, it actually flat out objectifies the woman as much as possible before the game actually starts. I guess she's the prize. 
So you're given six choices, typically two of these are right, two are right but not really, but they're enough to pass, and some are adject failures. Let's go for a failure! Yo, what up girl? Can I just talk to you for a second where you're headed? I'm busy. Yeah? Come back here. Wasn't there something on the news recently about women feel uncomfortable when random men start talking to them on the street trying to pick them up? Pretty sure that quite a lot of women would ignore you or tell you to flat out fuck off if you tried flagging them down like that, but hey, I can't afford a bunch of women to stand around disinterested, so I don't really have room to talk. I then opt for pretending to be blind. I thought it might be one of the passable choices, but it's somehow another failure. Who knew? <laughs> Very funny, but you know, in most cases she's just gonna brush you off. I then try Wolf Whistle, which is another controversial one as women have come out saying they don't like this. But some women do like this, so I guess it's a 50-50? It's just not polite, is it? We all know that the right choice is to run after them down the street and ask them if they'd like to play the lead role of Kim in your movie, Sunset Dreams. With a 50% discount. Which, by the way, swept Sundance. So, if you get the right choice, you get Richard praising you while surrounded by two scantily clad women who act like he isn't even there and just look bored. Especially this girl who looks like she'd rather be anywhere else. I also discovered that this woman right here, who looks really bored through most of it, but is slightly more awake than the other one, is in fact Rich's wife, Katarina Laruna. I also don't get why these women are in their underwear in some scenes, but more clothed in others. It'd make sense, I guess, if they stripped off depending on how hot you were being with your choices, or how far you got into the level, but... It's literally a case of them sometimes having clothes, and sometimes not. I mean, it would have made a lot more sense if it was like Menace Beach where the captive woman strips for you, but yeah, no, there's no thought into it at all. So I went for the successful option of telling her that I want to go down on her right now, but oddly enough, that doesn't go very well. What? I thought anyone was up for a free blowjob in the street, but seemingly not. Don't be sexual until you know that she would be open to it, which is never going to be in the first few seconds, especially in the daytime when she's probably just going to buy a coffee or on her lunch break. Or she could be on her way to do an important meeting or some other form of engagement, could be under a lot of stress and might not want your pickup artistry bullshit getting in her way to begin with. I mean, I just try to think of it as myself, like, there are some days where I go out and I want to be at home but I've got to pick up the dry cleaning or something, and if some idiot just steps in front of me and starts talking to me whilst I'm, you know, very tired and annoyed and busy, it just sent me over the edge. What if she's going to pick her kids up from school or something? I mean, you won't know by looking, but... Nobody likes some scared boy stopping them from getting from A to B when they've got enough on their plate as it is. I then try lying to her about going to college with her. You know, kind of like Bill Murray in Groundhog Day. Worked for him, but I don't have time travel on my side so I figured it would go horribly wrong. Sadly, the game engineers it to make it that we did attend the same college. The one right there. And at first I thought he did go to the college, and then he gets it wrong and reveals that he's lying about going to the college with her. It's a confused mess of lies, and I already don't like this, this relationship is not going to end well. Richard gives some solid advice on how this is, okay, not bad. This is okay, um, you can say things like, you know, you're from my yoga class, you're from my college, might be okay, not bad. Um, wise guru, may I ask why this is an outstanding? 
I mean, I'm not saying it is, but could you maybe tell me what I could do to achieve outstanding or something like that? Are you going to tell me what I did wrong there or... No? Okay. So what's your plans for today? I'm actually going to the park uh, to feed the yeah. squirrels with my friend. What? Feed squirrels? Yeah. And ducks or s <laughs> squirrels? <laughs> no, just the squirrels. We, uh... Yeah, fuck ducks. They don't deserve feeding. By the way, this is what Richard considers good seduction talk. Take notes, guys. Can I? I do. Mm, yes. Nice. That mm. sounds fun, actually. I never thought of that. But buy some almonds, go feed the squirrels. You should try it sometime. Okay. You're just so beautiful, and I want to give you a kiss. Whoa, no. No, 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 Why no, not? no, no. I'm not trying to fuck you in the arse or anything, just a little kiss. Fuck you. Do you live local around here somewhere? Yeah. That's nice. And do you spend a lot of time in this area? Um, I do, yeah. There's a nice coffee shop just down there. Have you been there? I have, um, but I'm going to meet a friend actually, so I need to go. Okay, what's her name? Is it a he or a she, actually? In the beginning, the girl actually shouldn't do most of the talking, so you don't want to ask a bunch of questions. You want to make statements and do most of the talking yourself. So what's your plans for today? I'm actually going to the park uh, to feed the yeah. squirrels with my friend. What? Feed squirrels? Yeah. I, uh, and ducks? Or <laughs> squirrels? <laughs> no, just the squirrels. We, uh, guys, yeah. yeah, we got them to be our friends. What do you feed them? Like hot dogs? <laughs> In the beginning, the girl actually shouldn't do most of the talking, so you don't want to ask a bunch of questions. You want to make statements and do most of the talking yourself. Um, okay, a few issues. Dale Carnegie, the guy who wrote How to Win Friends and Influence People, might disagree with you on that, as his philosophy was usually geared up to getting people to talking about themselves by asking some good probing questions. I'm also more likely to believe him because his book is almost 100 years old and has sold more copies than almost everything but Lord of the Rings and the Bible. Richard is not very good at this, and as a result, he likes to talk the girl's ear off. I might also point out that one thing that's really impressive to someone is remembering what they said. At this stage in the relationship, you should be listening to the other person as much as possible and remembering things about them, which you can bring up later to prove that you have an interest in them as a person and what they're talking about. If you talk non-stop, you could have the effect of looking too arrogant or too self-centered and come across as quite boring. Not to mention the other person might like talking a lot more than you do, and you should capitalize on that instead of trying to wrestle control from them for the sake of your own pathetic excuse of a masculinity. What Richard does here is deliberately makes it so that he asks a lot of pointless questions, but you could ask quite a few good questions that makes them think, or question things, or open up. Some people like to be challenged, like well-educated people who went to university. Such people may not want people blathering on about a load of shit for the sake of it. For all I know, this woman could be one of them. I think a real expert, or what I'd consider to be a real expert, would be able to create a positive spin on either of these things, due to them being subjective. They'd be able to tell you what kind of woman it would work on, and how to detect such women. Richard has no real insight, he's just telling you what works for him and dismissing anything different as stupid. Some women like to be talked to a lot and some like to talk. Some women have a vanity that you can appeal to by asking them a lot of questions and giving them an excuse to talk about themselves. This might be good if you don't have much to say about yourself. Again, this doesn't make you disinteresting. You could just not know where to start or might live a lot but not have much to say about yourself. You could also be the less interesting one of the two, which is perfectly fine. 
I had a crush on a girl in college who was infinitely more interesting than I was, and also was very attractive. In fact, being more interesting is an attractive quality, but it's not essential, and it's one of those things that you can't fake for long without being found out. People are subjective, and therefore attraction and seduction are subjective subjects. Everyone is different, and different things work for different people. Richard's job shouldn't be telling me what to do, but telling me what kind of people to do things to. Granted, there are some things that just never work, but honestly, his idea of a woman is a skinny model-esque middle-class girl, and his pickup artistry would never work on, say, a biker chick or a working-class girl who may appreciate openness and honesty a lot more and might not appreciate being manipulated on any level. It might actually scare them if they figure it out. Not trying to generalise either, I'm just saying, background can determine a number of factors of your personality, and all people are different, and I don't think Richard would do very well with such people. Yeah, I was just walking, there's a nice park down there, and then I'm going to meet some friends, but I've got like 40 minutes, and that's why when I saw you, and I thought you looked friendly, so that's why I came over and said hi. Honestly, that's the better option, just babbling about parks and shit. Okay, sure, yeah. Another thing that happens in this is that Richard goes on autopilot and does a bunch of things that you might not even consider doing for better or worse. These sequences feel incredibly disjointed from the last sequence because, well, he just feels like it faded into a completely different scene. It's funny considering that there's only one option that worked last time. You'd think that transitioning them would be pretty seamless, but nope. He comes across as a bit of a bumbling oaf at times, like he doesn't know what he's saying, and he actually flubs more than I do, and I'm an amateur, so I have that excuse. In truth, I just feel like he's... the kind of guy that this sort of thing should be aimed at, rather than the kind of guy who should be presenting it. And... I don't feel in awe of his brilliance, like, really, I should be. This isn't like a personal attack on him or anything, I'm just saying, from a standpoint of seeing him as the presenter, I don't think he's all that good of a personality. I like squirrels. Yeah? Yeah, and I like nuts. I like uh, cashews. Oh my god, what? What? Oh, fucking pervert. You like nuts, you said. If you like touching yourself, great, but make sure you do it in the privacy of your own home. You might be able to help me with this, actually. I was thinking of getting a tattoo. Let me yeah. show you. Oh. So like somewhere. No, no, no. Somewhere like on <laughs> my body. Keep your clothes on. No, come, Keep and, your clothes come and see. On. Girls just aren't as sexual as guys. Um. Yeah, Richard, you do realise that the idea of women aren't as horny as men is kind of a damaging stereotype, right? From my experience, girls are a lot more sexual than I am. I know girls who hook up with random guys, girls who send nudes quite casually, things I don't see myself doing in all honesty. So I then went on to ask what hairstyle would be good for me, which I thought was a good one since it plays into the women like to change guys and control them stereotype. But that was a bad move because... Psychologically, it's important to remember that asking for advice on dumb stuff as if you don't know what you're doing is not such a good thing to do in the early stages with a girl. Um, you ever heard a flirty suggestion? You know that thing that you can do where you tell someone something that they could do to impress them? Doesn't this play into that? Whatever. So I pick a dumbass option telling her that we both have the same name and it's apparently a real Casanova move. What's your name? Alexa? No way, you're joking. No. That's my name too, I'm oh. Alexa too, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too. Isn't that crazy? It is crazy. No, I'm joking, my name's Richard. Ah, uh, But it's well, still good to meet you. You too. This is a funny take on it, so of course you need to get her name, and in this case, you know, you followed up the very common boring question with a little bit of a joke. Of course it's important that you can uh, pull it off, you know, say it in a cheeky way, and it's another thing where it's guaranteed to get a laugh, and it's a question that you always need to ask. So 
It's a great one. Go out and try it. Wait, what if your name is Alex or Jack or some other form of unisex name? That could go really badly. What kind of things do you like to do in your free time? Mm, I actually don't have a lot of free time. I work, well, a, I work a lot. So when I'm not working, I like to be outside. Yeah. Um, yeah, I try to be outdoors as much as possible. I actually bike where you mentioned. Okay. Um, yeah, I just try to be outdoors. So you're one of these active people that's always doing stuff. <laughs> Boring. Yeah, it's hard for me to stay sitting down. Not couch potato. Well, every now and then, but in general, no, more active than okay. down. I'm kind of semi-active. Boring. <laughs> I'm uh, you said you work in IT? Did he? I don't remember him saying that. One thing that I find funny about this is that Richard has a dozen different jobs in this game, depending on which chapter he's playing. I like to imagine that he's the same character in all of them and that he's a pathological liar. I mean, it really works. In this one, he works in IT, though he talks about it like he's never seen a computer in his life. Yeah, I work in IT and actually I love my job. I think that, uh, you know, people think IT is boring, but at the moment it's like the most exciting field, right? To work in. There's so many cool companies. I really love my job. So happy to, <laughs> to go to work every day. And um, yeah, it's fascinating for me. That's great. Then he's unemployed in the second episode. And the third episode, he poses as a YouTuber. I guess that's an invitation to talk about the controversy surrounding this silly thing, isn't it? So, a YouTuber, I am Paddy Jack, actually covered this silly thing. God help him. And the Dick Ruiner, yeah, his name is literally Dick Ruiner in French, or Dick the Ruiner. Presumably because he's used his teeth too much whilst giving the blowjob. Anyway, he posted this lovely comment. Well, first of all, I thought that it was a hotel room as well, or a studio, which in all honesty is a fair assumption, as it's so void of clutter or any personal touches, then it might as well be a hotel room. But his other comment also makes me smirk. By virgin shy guys, do you mean guys who stumble over their words? look awkward in conversations and have fucked up ideas on what a woman actually is. You also can't say shit about being vague on your advice, Richard, after shit like this. This is okay. Um, you can say things like, you know, you're from my yoga class, you're from my college. Might be okay. Not bad. You know, I found in my own dating experience that the best thing that you can do is really be honest about these things. And all you do with this wheeler dealer chat up artistry bullshit is complicate things. It kinda reminds me of that old movie, School for Scoundrels. It's an old 50s film where a loser bloke goes to a school ran by Alistair Sim. Sim teaches him to be a better scoundrel, using his disingenuous tricks to get his own way with people around him, and particularly a girl that he desires. What I love about this movie is the ending, which I'll have to spoil to make my point, but this movie is like 50 years old, so you've kind of had your chance. In the end, he gets her into his bedroom and has seduced her to the point that she's willing to sleep with him. But he has a change of heart, realising that he's practically tricked her into it, and he tells her to leave. At this point, Alistair Sim and the guy's rival burst into the room and everything is revealed to the woman, and that she has in fact been duped. Oddly enough, it's not the pickup artistry that she remembers, but his act of sincerity, and he proceeds to confess why he did all of it, but knows now that he went too far. He came to that conclusion on his own. At this point, Alistair Sim and the guy's rival are at a loss because... You see, once, once sincerity rears its ugly head, well, lifemanship is powerless. I'm also an arse model, look, check oh, it out. Oh, come on. Look at that, what do you think? It's nice. Good, yeah? Sure. Have a touch. No, no, no. Put your hand on no. it, it's fine. Don't I'm... be shy, come on. I'd rather not. You can, really, it's okay. No. Look, I can touch you, you can oh touch me. Oh my god, me. no, you can't. Ooh. No, you can't. I could get your job. With sincerity, lifesmanship is meaningless. This, my friends, is the sad truth of things. You have two choices in life. Lie and pretend you're something else, posing and gesturing your way to look a big shot, or you can be sincere. Neither of these two things are wrong, 
or perfect. I don't blame anyone for picking one over the other, truth be told. But one means living a lie, and the other means that you risk someone not liking you for who you are. And that can hurt, but some would argue that someone not liking the real you is better than them only liking the persona that you put on to try and impress them. The game even touches upon this in the club level where I opted to dance off with a woman and made her laugh. Richard scolds you and says that it's a risky move that may not always work, missing the fact that if it does work, then it works really well. And if it doesn't work, if you're not putting an act on, then that means that the woman actually likes you for who you are. And in truth, I find that a lot more rewarding. And as well, if you are rejected for being who you are, you haven't lost anything. The person isn't interested in you. He then proceeded to berate I Am Paddy Jack, saying that he should be more like Donkey. No. No, he shouldn't. He should be himself and also stick to knowing the facts about a game before reviewing it. Richard took umbrage with the fact that it was showcased on a series called X is the Worst Game Ever, and he thought that the video was just picking on his game in particular, when actually it's just the title of the series, like curiosity's sake. But in all honesty, even on this show, Super Seducer on my website list is not going to break the bottom. Like, in terms of being a game, it's not a game. It's a fucking interactive movie at best, which is fine, especially if it's a good interactive film. It's like a grade above Plumbers Don't Wear Ties, because it has moving video and slightly better acting. And in all honesty, Plumbers Don't Wear Ties is a lot more memorable because it's funnier due to its ineptitude. Honestly, this is a grade above the Dingo Pictures games that I played. I'm sorry, but... Due to its lack of gameplay, I can't even put it higher than them shit Miss Marple games. I'm even more generous as well because I had way more fun with Dingo games than I did playing this. And the only reason that this gets that pass is it is of higher quality and there's more interactivity. Mind you, it does have as many flubs as a Dingo film, so... It should be interesting to note that I Am Paddy Jack didn't even call this the worst game ever. Not in any meaningful sense, as he put it on his Worst Game Ever series. And it's just a title for the series as a whole. One thing I find funny about this is that Richard did point out that sending a review code to someone who makes a series called X is the Worst Game Ever isn't really the best idea. And then someone congratulated him on not doing the wrong thing i.e. doing a DMCA that was fucking spurious. And like an idiot cartoon character, which he basically is, he then immediately did the wrong thing, ignoring the praise for not doing it and taking it as a suggestion instead. <laughs> so he proceeds to use a spurious DMCA takedown. Well, actually, no, to be fair, he did back out at first, but then he was called out on his snobbishness and called a craven, and to prove that he isn't a pussy, he did the spurious DMCA takedown, even though nobody called him a pussy. Richard was, at this point, at odds with his own PA department, who emailed the offended party apologising in advance for their man-child client. He then sends a rather sporadic email to the YouTuber saying that he did the DMCA takedown to prove that he could, and then randomly says that they shouldn't talk anymore. Now, look at this message, that looks like it was cobbled together by a serial killer with old newspaper clippings, and tell me, is this the man that you see here? And this is what I'm talking about. You can put on a face so long as everything is under control, and everything is the way you want it to be. But when it's not, when you have to react to real life situations, shit just falls apart. People see the real you and they don't like what they see. Richard also failed to get the game onto the PS4. In truth, I can see why. The only reason that this game exists on Steam is that Steam is, well, Steam. 
and anywhere else they have some form of standards and quality control. Stopping games that tell you how to manipulate a woman in a long-term relationship to break up with them by taking away their independence. This works psychologically because you're taking away her independence. You're saying, well, would, you, would he allow you to talk to me? Like, are you allowed to do that? So she's going to want to say, of course I'm allowed. I do what I like. And, you know, our relationship's fine. We don't, you know, I'm, I'm allowed to talk to other men. She's not going to want to say, actually, I'm not allowed. And, you know, I shouldn't do it because he controls me and tells me exactly what to do. So it's the right option. From being exposed to the mass public. And I honestly think that's fair enough. The point is... Well, it's funny that Dick the Ruiner poses as a YouTuber in this game, and then when a real YouTuber was critical of it, he decides to fuck with their revenue, because the golem voices in his head told him that he was being called a pussy. <laughs> I did look into some of the actresses for this game, and oddly enough, to my surprise, they're actresses in real movies. I honestly thought they were models given that they're not required to do much by way of acting, but there you go. Shana Vincent apparently worked on Mr. Right, a film that starred Sam Rockwell, and American Ultra, a movie I've wanted to see for a while. She was a stunt double in that, kind of like that woman in Lara Croft who got kind of famous for some reason. Not that she shouldn't, but I never got why. She came out in defense of this game after a Guardian article said that this game encourages men to grope women. And honestly, the article must have been in the wrong because it doesn't exist anymore. I followed the link and it doesn't exist, so I guess they had to take it down. But... Shana is right, there's nothing in the game that ever encourages you to get physical with a woman in any capacity. Not only do they make Richard look like a fool when he attempts it, but Richard then goes on to scold the player for clicking the option, usually going along the lines of, yeah, it's funny in the game in the sense that it's inappropriate and we wouldn't do it in real life, but don't do it in real life. Honestly, this game has a lot of problems, but in truth, I don't think this encourages anyone to be a sex offender, and I think the media just made up a bunch of shit when it wasn't necessary. Oddly enough, Richard replied to this thread, which is 100% in English, and it's about an English article, and he replied in fucking Russian, despite the fact that he speaks perfect fucking English. Yeah, I don't speak Russian, so I can only give you what the translator tells me he said. If this is wrong in any dramatic way, you, you can tell me, I don't care. I'm surprised that there is such a person in Russia who thinks so. I thought they were not foolish enough in Russia, as in America, nor were they so hostile. This is just a game. There is no niche there. GTA and so many other games is much worse. We got a 16 plus rating. Well, GTA doesn't encourage you to grope women either, unless you count the strippers, but the strippers want you to, so... Wait, why is Richard's Twitter account Richard Gambler? And why does former President Barack Obama follow this guy? Anyway, let's go back to this game, shall we? I'd rather not. You can, really, it's okay. No. Look, I can touch you, you can oh touch me. Oh my god, me. no, you can't. Mm -hmm. No, you can't. I could get you a job. This was going okay until you tried to touch her. You know, a girl is not ready at that time for that kind of sexuality. And you can't really get anywhere by rushing that fast. You were doing really well. You started off lying about your profession, and then you showed her your ass. But then you went and ruined it by trying to touch hers. Idiot! At this yeah, point, like the inappropriate responses that, get uh, boring, you know, so I boring, kind of gave the up on them. The they quickly right, lose their charm and aren't good enough really to be funny so or bad enough to, to be funny, day, and um, some of them drag um, on for I'm fucking ages. Yeah, I work in IT and actually I love my job. I think that, uh, you know, people think IT is boring, but at the moment it's like the most exciting field, right? To work in. There's so many cool companies. I really love my job. So happy to, <laughs> to go to work every day. And 
you know, I really like retirement. If you have a job and you think it's boring, that's not important. Um, the thing that you need to do is show that you have passion for something. If, it's, if you do like your job, even if you think other people are not interested, speak passionately about it and you can get them to buy in, feel at least the emotion, even if they don't understand it that well. So, you know, don't worry about it being boring. Worry about how you tell others about it and hope that your emotion will be contagious. What if your emotion isn't contagious? What if it just bores the fuck out of her or she realises that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about? Oh, I love the retirement. Well, you know what? There's a special quality I look for and I would only stop girls if they have that exact thing. So okay. it's quite, you know, something special going on. Do you want to know what it is, the quality? <laughs> yeah, I do. Well, it's just when the girl just looks like she's dying to be fucked and basically... Excuse me? Yeah, like she's just ready to... Bang, right no, there that's and then. vulgar. That's oh, really vulgar. Vulgar? Yes. No? Yeah. That's totally cool in the game, but in real life, I must tell you that you shouldn't even swear at girls, never mind getting sexual. As a man, you have a responsibility to treat women with respect and always make sure that they feel better after the interaction with you than they did before. No matter how rude they are, they've got a right to be rude. And if they're not rude, then even more reason to be polite and make them feel good. Um, what? Yeah, this is one of the instances where I feel that Richard is somewhat out of touch with reality. You see, women are human beings. As in, they make choices. And they can choose when to be rude or not. When people are rude to me, I seldom make the effort to be nice. If I know it's their choice to be behaving that way, I don't feel remotely bad leaving things on bad terms if it's the other person's fault. By Richard's logic, it's the man's job to take abuse from a woman, no matter how much of a wet bitch she is, and he can't even tell her to fuck off as women don't like that. Richard, women swear too, you know. Some women even like swearing. The vast majority of them are adults and don't give a fuck. I also don't like the way that this implies that you should talk to women differently than men. Almost talking down to them as you see in this video, where Richard talks to this woman like she's not only stupid, but below him. Well, well, that's one of those things about um, one of those criticisms, right? It's like saying somebody can't take criticism. Um, it's very difficult to come back from that. Yeah. Um, so but you haven't got an answer for it. That's very I haven't good. got an answer um, about being entitled and overweight. You don't? Well, no, I think being entitled is... I don't think Richard has that kind of respect for women. He doesn't see them as equals and sees them as lessers who he treats benevolently. He more or less sees women like most people see dogs. Something to lord over, manipulate, and something you can't do certain things around or to. Like a dog, he wouldn't stand by whilst someone abused it in a malicious way. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that, but the kind of things that are morally questionable, like making a dog bounce a treat on its nose until it's given permission to eat, will likely go over his old-fashioned mullet. In my reality, women and men are equals, and that means, yes, there's a downside as well. If someone is being abusive to me, I'm not going to take it for their lack of a penis. Sorry, but that is the price of equality for me. When treated the same as everyone else, you are treated the same as everyone else. I also find it funny how Richard is very aggressive towards men, but insists that it's never okay to be aggressive to a woman as well. You should just talk down to them. I'm not saying that Richard has no respect for women or that he hates women, but I don't think he has complete respect for women. I don't think he sees women as equals. So I went with the honest action, and in all honesty, this is something I do in real life, or at least I'd like to think I do in real life. Richard liked it. Well, 
when he could get his line out through all the bumbling. It's honest and it's disarmingly honest. So it's going to take her back a little bit, but it's going to also show that you're telling tr the truth, that she can trust you and show that you're confident enough to, to say that instead of making up some rubbish. So it's the right choice. Well done. Jesus, I can't believe you had the gall to have a go at I Am Paddy Jack for his presentation skills. Aren't you a professional of some capacity? Fuck it. So, you get a results page and I got Casanova. I'm gonna go with the David Tennant portrayal and take it as a compliment. We then start off in level 2 where we observe these women in a very respectful light. And then it cuts to the choices. I like to think that those shots were filmed by someone who didn't have permission to film those women and was just gorilla filming them in a club. So, I did find an inappropriate option that is kind of funny as Richard stealthily creeps up on them and the facial expression he pulls are both funny and rather well performed for this game. I feel like he really gives off the vibe that he was going for. How's it going, girl? Get out! This might seem like a bad option, but you'd be wrong, because look, they left their drinks unattended, meaning that I get to walk away from this with two free drinks. Which makes me the ultimate champion of Super Seducer. See, even Richard agrees. You know, cool. Well done. <laughs> well done for choosing the creepiest choice in the game. Thanks, hipster Jesus. So did this guy who we went out the other day call you back? No. Oh, yeah, what up, girl? It's fine. Hey. Um, hey, hey. I, I like you him. too. Hey. Listen, uh, do you know what I really, really like in a girl? Surprise me. My dick. Surprise! Oh. Surprise! Oh, how Happy surprise! How smart! Does it work? Does it work? It yeah. works very well. Don't need, don't need anything. <laughs> it's ready now to work. If you really? Like. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna prove? Prove it? Yeah. yeah Show us how it works. Okay, what's it? Check this out. Look, sure. you ready for a big surprise? Oh, oh the big one. Whoop! Check it out. Not so big, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this guy? What's wrong with you? I don't know. They're calling me Big Richie and stuff. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I never heard of Big Richie. But wanted to hurt your feelings, you I know? Can, um, I work it as well, yeah. <laughs> no, we're fine, really. Thank you. I've got my confidence, to be honest. <laughs> you were to, sorry, you were... I didn't mean that, but. Shit, anyway, thank you for ruining my whole life. No problem, anytime. Bye. 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 <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that was fun at least. Mm -hmm. The first funny guy in this place. Well, this so does exactly sort of have a positive know. effect. Yeah, they do say that you're the first funny guy they've seen, and Richard's follow up here is dick, okay, good job. Do you like anyone here? Um, where do you want to go next? We can just change. Please. Yeah, let's wait maybe five minutes and. Then. Yeah, 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 we'll have a drink. Okay. And then just hey, go. girls, you talking about me? Mm, no. Well, why not? <laughs> why should we? That's a great subject. <laughs> you think? Yeah. Um, probably that's number one, and then number two would be uh, about guys, and number three about shopping. Like top three subjects. Hmm. But talking about you as a man, talk as well. Yeah, I combine all three, and, and I go shopping, so you can just talk ah, about okay. me the whole time, and we'll be, we'll be <laughs> okay. fine. That's correct, nice one. Wait, what? I was kidding! It's a cool, funny line, you know, in the bar, ideally, you want to get girls laughing very fast, right? And be more interesting than their boring conversation that they were having before you came. So, this is a nice light opener, again, need to deliver it with a little bit of a smirk and a smile, not seriously, and it will work well most of the time. So yeah, if you can pull this off in a jokey way, it works well, but in reality, 
I'm sure this would be a risky move. So Richard goes on autopilot and decides to imply that girls who go into higher education only want to do girly things like fashion and drama. Yeah, that works, practically insulting the person you're hitting on. Nice one. It's not even an accurate stereotype. The majority of women I know who went into higher education went into like computer science and fucking biology. There are wrong options here, but they're just boring now. I mean, fuck, seen one, seen them all. Again, the fun of this is gone already, and so has the outrage. Not that there was much of either to begin with. I'd say that it was like 60-40 stupid to mildly offensive ratio, but now it's just rot. Things like Richard saying that it's better to tease and to be mean in a way that sounds like, well, you should only laugh when it's funny. It's just, I don't know, it's just lost all meaning at this point. We do get to see Richard's brilliant conversational skills though, so it's worth it for that. Imagine all the people living happy without money. Imagine all the people, blonde girl in blue dress with guy called Richard. Imagine all the people don't need money. Just no. need love. Okay, stop singing. You're brilliant singer. No, no I was just gonna Wonderful. say something <laughs> opposite. Oh, fuck it. Let's just wrap this thing up. I mean, it's not like this thing throws any curveballs in the second or third level, and I'm just gonna end up repeating myself anyway. Like, really? This is kind of painful at this point. The third level isn't that noteworthy. It's just more of the same. But I do want to point out this girl here, who is one of the highlights of the game for me. She has absolutely no stage direction whatsoever, and she just stands around looking rather confused and lost. Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if you told me she wasn't even an extra and she was just there. It's pretty funny. Like, you'd think she'd get some stage business, but whatever. So, Super Seducer is a bad game, it's a bad tutorial, and it's an experience that loses its charm, what little charm it even has, within its first hour. And I think you can potentially get 6 hours of content out of this thing, so, fuck. The best part is that this silly thing has a sequel, yes, they couldn't fit all of this bullshit into one game, and they've had to make more than one. Why they couldn't have made it part of the game in some way, I don't know. But, we're going to get another one of these on the 12th of September. You know, you could have fit it within the game's DLC, which, yeah, it has DLC. Which apparently costs $3.99 for each piece, or you can buy them all for $23.94. Seriously, the DLC costs more than the game?! Now, I am aware that there are some games that have a lot of DLC, and some rather costly DLC. Fallout 4, for instance, has $60 worth of DLC, and it's worth it. But bearing in mind that this is just five videos and an audiobook. That's right, a stupid fucking audiobook is considered DLC for this thing. 499s worth of DLC. Well, join me next time as I hopefully get to do something in one of these videos. I mean, between this and Cartoon Kingdom and that mouse patrol thing, that's three games in a row where I barely interacted with them. Seriously. Fuck. Imagine all the people <laughs> living happy without money. Oh, he Imagine said. Imagine <laughs> all the he people did say so. blonde girl in blue dress with guy called Richard. <laughs> yeah. Imagine all the people <laughs> don't right. need money, just no. need love. Okay, stop singing. You're brilliant singer. No, no I was just going to say something. <laughs>
opposite. Oh, tell me, be honest. That's my other principle, you're number forty-seven. You're not John Lennon at all, you know. When you're not, you're Corona. But we make what we can with life, you know. <laughs> well, I'm satisfied with myself, you know. I'm fine. We can go to Japan. We can try. <laughs> Why don't we go to Japan? You know how much it really. costs. Yeah. And they cost money. Fuck, don't they? Yeah. So maybe you should just go do some stuff to make some money and then come up to the girls. I need yeah. money, don't mm -hmm. I? John Lennon had money. Yeah. He did, he wrote it's Beatles. easy to say stuff like this, but when you don't have money, you mm. can't afford the money. Can't afford you? Please. No, you can't. So. How about you? You cheaper? No. <laughs> That's Same rude. price. Maybe Mara. buy one, get one free. Leave. No, wow. don't wait. All right, girls. Look, so. um, okay. Well, look, it was lovely to speak to you. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe see you at karaoke or something, yeah? I don't think so. <laughs>